but the game was different, right? The the, the rules was different. The ball. Oh, the, was Euro, the, like, Euro, the Euro style is different in America. The Euro style was a lot different <laughs> than America. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, um, my name is Andre Arroso. I am 23 years old, originally from Northampton, England. And at the age of 19, I went to a junior college in Colorado named Otero and have recently in 2020 just graduated from my four year school, which is Chaminade University in Hawaii in NCAA Division Two. Beautiful. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, great, great, great thank catching pleasure. up with you. Great catching up with you. Um, Okay, so let's get straight into it. How and why did you choose your, um, I guess, you know, the first experience you had going over to the States was going to junior college. So talk to us a little bit about that. Um, why did you choose it and how did you get that opportunity? Personally, like I started basketball pretty late. I really started to really understand that I wanted to do this as a career at around age 15. And then, so that window between 15 and 16, I, at 16, I moved to like an elite academy here in England called Charmel College. Mm -hmm. And I did three years there. Um, it was probably the biggest three years of my life to this day in terms of molding me as a person um, and as a basketball player and really like making me understand what it's going to take for me to go to America. Because mm -hmm. before even basketball was a thing for me, I've always wanted to live in America and be in America. So I just nice. knew that basketball was kind of one, one of those things that was going to help me get that. But um, so the junior college route isn't really a preferred route for any outsider in, who's not American. No one really wants to go JUCO first. We all want to go to a D1 or a good D2 school. But for me, I was also one of those guys. And... Um, I think with my situation, it was between coming out of my second year in Charmwood, I was deciding between Delta State, which is a Division II school, um, Spire Academy, which is a prep school, and then Montana mm -hmm. State, which is in the big sky. We were like talking a lot and that was, yeah. And then it was kind of like an iffy, wasn't really aligning as, as much smoothly as I thought it was. And it was getting later in the process. And then you have to do your SATs and clearing house. And for like me, it was all alien to me. So it was just one of those things where the best situation for me was to go to junior college, which one of the Montana State coaches hooked me up with. Um, his name's Chris Haslam. And he hooked me up to go to Otero Junior College, which is like one of the best junior colleges in the nation. Um, so I went there. Um, at first, I was a bit skeptical from the stereotypes of Juco, um, especially like just an English kid that's never been to America, never. Mm -hmm. Like all I've been watching is hoop mixtape. That's all I've been watching <laughs> as like what I know from <laughs> basketball, isn't it? Uh -huh. So it's just, I didn't know what I was going to go into. But I got there and it was probably the best moments of my life than that. And it really made me go through trials and tribulations at first, I thought it was going to break me, but it ended up making me, so. Okay, okay. There's, there's a lot of mixed reviews about Juco, so yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. There really is, though. Uh, really is. Yeah, that's the, yeah. I mean, I guess it's potluck, and there's so many programs, and I guess it depends on what type of Juco, like what, you know, is there a lot of uh, D1 um, transfers that go there, and you know what I mean? It's, it just yeah. all depends. What type of scholarship did you get, if any? Um, and did your grades play a factor in your recruitment? And I guess this is for both situations now. Um, you know, we're looking at when you initially went over uh, to Ontario and, 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 and then after when you transferred to D2. Full scholarship for both of my colleges so I got a full scholarship to my junior college and then a four for my four-year school I also got a scholarship um yeah man that without that full scholarship I wouldn't have even attended university um even if I stayed here at, in England I don't think financially like obviously I come from just me and my mum and my two older sisters so mm. I don't think financially like it wasn't doable without basketball so I'm very grateful for that but yeah I was 
fortunate enough to get a full ride for both of my schools. And did you have to pay anything? So uh, as I said, I mentioned earlier, we spoke to Jordan yesterday and Mm -hmm. he spoke about there was like some unknown costs. So he said he had to pay for his books. He said he had to pay for um, some international fees, I think he said, and some other things. So what what, what did you have to pay? um, When I got to JUCO, so I knew I was on a full ride, but when you're an international student, there's like international tax, which I think, yeah. so you get taxed on your scholarship, right? As you would. And there's like a little number that I think we have to pay for as athletes, mm-hmm. especially in my JUCO. I remember going through this because I was so confused. I was like, I can't give free grand. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, we got billed for international tax. But if you're proactive about it and speak to the right people, you can get, like, when the tax returns come, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you can actually claim it back. I'm not sure if you get all of it back, but you definitely uh, get, like, three quarters back. And that's what I did. So that worked out all right. You just have to open an American bank account. So then, because they're a bit weird when it comes to a They're trying to do no, no, no offshore deals, no? no none of that kind of... Yeah. Very no. fat in the Hamptons. Okay. Um, okay. And did your grades play a part in you getting a full scholarship? You know, was it completely academic? Was it academic and yeah? So I got a full athletic scholarship for both uh-huh. of mine. But if my grades weren't on point, I wouldn't have got the athletic scholarship. Period. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. So. The importance of grades works both ways. Like, if you can keep good grades through, let's say for an English guy, GCSEs, A-levels, and then do good in your SATs, I think, especially speaking to my coaches when they're recruiting, as I'm an older, they really do go, what's his academics like from the get-go? Because especially in JUCO, you get a lot of guys that coast through it and they can't play because their grades are bad or they're not putting in the effort. And then... They're a D1 player, but don't have the grades to go to that good D1 school. Same with D2. So it's one of those ones where you have to get your grades, regardless if it's, you need an academic scholarship or if you just want to play and get some sort of scholarship, you have to have academics. Like my second school, Chaminade, was a private school. Like all of the kids like were high, high A's and B's. And we had to become that. And it was pressure. So it's not just about <laughs> do you have good grades on paper. It's like not just about the paper grades. It's like, do you have a work ethic of having good grades? And it I really does come yeah. to everything. So that's the biggest message I could give to anyone who's trying to go to America is your grades. Just don't even mess around with it. Don't even mess around with it. Just do what you have to do because you don't want any slip ups to be like, oh, you're a couple marks off or you didn't have this. Don't. Don't play with it because I've seen too many people have their dreams crushed because they don't have the grades. So, yeah, man, it's, it's it's real, it's real. What type of questions did you ask your uh, your coaches when you was being recruited? I guess in both scenarios, um, yeah. and are there stuff that you wish that you asked? Yeah. Um, so what I did because I was a very like in my younger years, from around sixteen to nineteen, I was just that annoying kid that would ask too many questions. Mm-hmm. I say annoying, it's good to ask questions. I like, never to ask not questions. Ask questions. But I think I learned, because I had people like Connor Washington, Will Maynard, kind of who were like a mentor, big brother figures for me while I was in Leicester. So they guided me a lot on their experiences and questions. You have to understand how the recruiting world works, especially as a youngster how it is a business. If, you, if you're looking at big D1 schools and high level D2, like those coaches feed their families through you in such in a nutshell, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. So they're looking to be like, okay, like who's going to come in and produce? So then now they're looking at you who they haven't seen live because you're across the world and you do cost more in terms of scholarship. So why should I take you out of the thousands of American guards or bigs that I have here? So you have to have that in your mindset. 
So you're already in some sort of bracket compared to everyone else. So the questions that I would ask is not just because any coach that promises playing time, you should definitely question. No one should promise you playing time. Because that's, that's all we want to hear as players. We're like, yeah, tell me I'm going to play 25 minutes a game. Tell me, like, I've got the end of the clock. We want to hear that, but that's not what you're looking for. You need to know what responses you're looking for from a coach. So is it just about basketball? No, you want a coach that's more like, who are you as a person? How is he going to make you grow into a young man? Like, those things are so important. If you can get a coach that invests on you outside of basketball, that's also a very good positive. Jordan Spencer, will know, he went to a really good school and his coach mm-hmm. is very, kind of like a Greg Popovich, like Spurs, how he's like mm-hmm. very like mm-hmm. close to players out of the game. You need that. Um, so I asked like, one question I did ask my Chaminade coach that was a bit weird. I was like, so who are you outside of basketball? And I just oh, you went for the deep, the deep question, huh? I went in deep. I went in deep. I was like, "Who are you, like, who are outside you? of basketball?" Like, I feel like that's a good question, like, because I would want to be that asked that question. Like, is he a family man? Is he someone that does this? Is he does that? Like, it. You need to kind of know what you're walking into because it's very tricky. But you also need to understand, like, what's your long goal for me? Like, do you you think I'm someone that's raw, and you think in two to three years I'm gonna be like a main player? Um, what do you think my weaknesses are? Like, how are you going to help me on a day-to-day basis outside of practice? You want coaches that are going to have a plan for you outside of just practicing. Because when we practice, especially when you go to a four-year school, you have the red shirts, the freshmen, the sophomores, the juniors and the seniors. Seniors and juniors, they run it. Like, we all know, like, they've obviously either been there all those years or had the experience. They run the show. So if you're coming in as a freshman or a sophomore and you're like, okay, I'm coming to kill practice. Well, it's not going to go like that, regardless of how good you are, because they already take it. So it's like, okay, what can I do outside of practice to make Mm. sure that I am one of those guys? But you can't do it alone. That's where you need to ask those questions. Like, what, what is your role for me? What do you see me as? What do you think my strengths are in this team? There's so many questions you need to ask, but I think it's just important to have a Skype, Zoom or FaceTime call. Because over mm-hmm. the phone, especially American coaches, they know, they've been doing this for years. They know how to get a player to their school. They, they know how to do it. So you don't want to just go there and be like, yeah, sounds sick. They have a campus. Cool. <laughs> the coach talks about too much about the campus. Like you're not going because of the campus, you know? You're not going mm-hmm. because they have good food. You're not going because it's a party school. You're not, like, you want to know about the academics, the basketball and the growth that you're going to have there stick to those main things and i know i'm talking because i've been hawaii but that's not the reason that i don't <laughs> but like that's what that's what you need to be like really looking into but hawaii you can't say no to hawaii. yeah i was just about to say did you ask him any questions you was like so what's the school code you said hawaii you said cool i'll be there monday is that how it works? I you just, <laughs> i'll be there monday <laughs> just have my room ready we'll, we'll talk yeah, afterwards man we'll, we'll, we'll talk yeah, we'll find out who you are when I get there and we're chilling on the beach. We can do that, you know what I mean? <laughs> just just, just get me there, coach. I hear you. I feel you, man. Uh, he said, he trying to tell me, you know, the, the deep questions and what the, like, what's your, your, your innermost thoughts? And then he's like, hey, what, Hawaii? No, no, we good. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Um, I, sound like a, I sound like a hypocrite. <laughs> You didn't get nothing about anything going on. You're like, Hawaii. I see what that place is like. What was the league play like? Um, you know, was it, you know, uh, a big league, a guard league, a lot of shooters, ISO play, um, a lot of post-ups. Um, and I guess this is for, you know, both Juco and D2. Um, you know, just let us know what leagues you were in or what conferences and what they, what the play was like in those leagues. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think it was a blessing in disguise for me to go to JUCO and then to like one of the best Division Twos. Because um, JUCO, it does fit the stereotype and in terms of it's very... Um, I wouldn't say structured, but you have a lot of athleticism in JUCO. 
you need to be able to play fast, athletic, kind of like that grit, grind, like street ball kind of mentality. Like that's like really what it is. Like that is the culture, especially my conference. I was in region nine and that was one of the best like regions in the country. And we went to um, the national tournament in Hutch in my second year. But we make the conference like finals and stuff like all the time. But that majority, I would say mostly a guard league, I would say with Juco. You get a lot of good, good guards that guards is overpopulated, especially in the States. Like so a lot of them just end up going Juco, whether they're bounce backs from four year schools or but yeah, guards for sure in Juco. That's why it's so much of a grind as well. Like you're always going to be guarding a guard, bigger, smaller guards. The competition's higher. You've got to try to get seen more. So it's hard. It's, a, mm. it's tough. But yeah, fast, physical, kind of just that down gritty basketball. And it's definitely a culture change because here in England, like you don't, don't see, see that. You Maybe you, see you, might, you might get one game a year if you play EABL or stuff where it's otherwise you just, yeah, you're not going to see that kind of like people being able to like jump out of the gym or like guys that are just shifty and like shaky. Like you don't see that much in Europe. When you go to Juco, you see it like a lot. Um, then completely flip the switch. I go to Chaminade, which is a high top ranked division two school. And we played in the Pacific West conference. Um, that's, big guards, shooters, wings, like all just good structured players. Athletic guys as well. Like it's just a mixture of all. And to be honest, we were pretty much like a division one team. Like we play in the Maui tournament and in the past years, like they've beat division one schools. We played Arizona my first year and San Diego State and we lost by like five. Um, but they beat division ones all the time. Um, we almost beat Georgia University, but we got hit on a buzzer beater by Anthony Edwards, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, D Division 2 is a bit less athleticism than Division 1, but more smart, more a lot of more shooters. Like everyone can shoot. There's not really a person in Division 2 that can't shoot. Okay. So. Okay, let's go. Um... Yeah, like, the, and that's another common contrast that we're having is that, you know, Juco is just kind of like everybody kind of just fighting to get out kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then, you know, when you go to your D2s, your D1s, or your D3s, it's just like, hey, you can play a lot more structure, a lot more time, a lot more effort. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what helped you to graduate and play? Um, so, you know, what things did you have in place um, and how easy or difficult was it to be a student athlete, as they say? Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me, I'll talk about the four-year school because that one was way harder than my junior college career. Um, especially being in Hawaii. So a lot of our games would have to fly and we would be gone out of school for like two weeks a piece. So that's like, yeah, yeah. So we would go to California, play California schools, come back, play our home games, go to like Southern California and do those games, come back. Like it's very, okay. yeah, very like NBA lifestyle, like living in hotels and like, which is cool because you get to experience it and it's a taste mm -hmm. of like the pro world and everything like that. But, the way I had to grasp time management okay. is madness. And I couldn't even begin to tell you, like, I had to cancel, I think, my first, my second month for being there, my Xbox membership, gone. <laughs> had to, had to, had to. Hey, okay. I had to, because that was a distraction. I think I really sat myself down and, like, I didn't go into rock bottom with my schoolwork but I watched other guys do it and I watched the consequences and I was like it can't be me it can't be me so I just like okay 
I, li I remember, I actually remember this moment. I remember writing down all my priorities. I was like, okay, school, of course, basketball, right. And then all like the things I would probably put a lot of focus on, like Xbox and like chilling and maybe like going to the beach all at the bottom. And I was like, okay, I'm spending way more time than that on my school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then go. So I literally had a plan. I had a whiteboard in my room and it was like gridded off. I was like, okay, you get two hours a week to play your Xbox. That's it. That's all I gave myself. These days have to be with schoolwork. Because our coach was very mature and he trusted us as like grown men to be like, okay, we're going away for two weeks. Make sure you're proactive with your schoolwork. Get it done. So that week before we fly, I'm literally go walking into my teachers like, okay, here's the sheet that I'm leaving. What am I going to miss? What do I need to know now? Like, we're going to be in constant emails. Like, I had to be on top of it. And it was a lot. Like, it was very, like, tedious. But it really, like, kept me in gear. And by doing that, everything else kind of fat into place. Like, my basketball was going good. I just felt more mature. Like, I was a lot more relaxed. I didn't. I could just focus on ball because I would spend two hours a day just locking off and just focusing on my schoolwork. Yeah, that's, that's, man, that's tough, man. Um, yeah, you know, living on the road for two, like it's that's very easy to get distracted being on the road, and I mean, you don't want to well, do anything. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't, like you're on the you road don't. with the fellas. You know, you've seen some sites, some places that you've never been before, and, and you got mm -hmm. yeah. That's hey, hats off to you, man. Are there any hacks um, that you can share? Any any? Uh, I don't want to say shortcuts, but you know, are there any? things to help the, the study bit go easier? Um, what did I do? Okay, the biggest thing for me is I set alarms. I okay. probably have like eight alarms that go off within my day. Um, but the biggest hack I'll probably say is wake up an hour earlier than you usually would. I think that's probably the biggest thing in for anyone to do um so i watch a lot of steve harvey like i watch like a lot okay. of uncle steve uncle steve but waking up an hour early really like changed my life like even if you don't have to be up like if you ain't got to be up till nine wake up at eight because it always takes us like 45 minutes or an hour to really get into what you have to do in the day like you wake mm. up lounge you probably go on your phone probably message people back and you get up do what you have to do then you eat breakfast and then you're like okay it's 10 o'clock let me do what i have to do like no wake up an hour early wake yourself up breakfast boom 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 so then you're already ahead of the game technically and that like played like my own mind trick on myself i die i'm gonna wake up at six and to this day i wake up at six every day like religiously i wake up i work out I like write my to-do list of what I need to do. That's another one, to-do list. To-do list, to-do list, to-do list. That's, that's what my alarms are, is like, by 12 o'clock, I need to have sent this email. By two o'clock, I need to have stretched for 45 minutes. Like, that's the kind of like professional mentality you need to like get yourself. If you can get that from a young age, like 18, you are gonna find it a lot easier. Like. Yeah. Easier. Either pay the piper now or pay the piper later. Like you're gonna have to do it. <laughs> so it's one of those things where can you be disciplined enough to just fix up? Like it's one of those like you know where you want to be, you know why you chose to go to America, you know how hard it is to be a good player in a huge pond. Like what are you, what are the little details are you gonna like shine in to make sure that you're better? Because we all could go to the gym and shoot 400 shots a day. Everyone does that. Mm -hmm. If you're really about it, everyone does that. But, like, what separates you? Because that guy that might be a good, better shooter than you probably doesn't do schoolwork like you, probably doesn't wake up an hour early and stretches. Da, 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 da. Those little things, it's long. It's long. Trust me, it's long. Those times where I'm like, <laughs> allow this. But it's like you have to really believe that those little details of, all right, I'm stretching more than him. All right, I went to the gym before him. I went, like, those little things is what little builds, things. like, confidence, builds that grit, builds that chip on your shoulder. And for me, that, that's 
what happened with me, man. So just set alarms, to do lists, and wake up an hour early than you would. That's what, that's probably the main three things for me. Nice. You kind of touched on it a little bit um, when you were talking about, you know, the, I guess, the rankings of um, a, a team. Um, but personally, for you, um, you know, you was, uh, uh, you know, before you left, you was a solid guard in the EABL and National League, and you know, um, big, big minutes, um, really solid production. Um, as you said, when you went over to JUCO, what was it mm. like? Um, well, I guess yeah, both programs. When initially, when you went over to JUCO, what was it like having to adjust to your new role? So, you know, kind of being the guy um, back home and now you're in, you know, uh, Colorado on your own, no, but n a nobody, you know, talk about that adjustment. Yeah. Um, I hated it <laughs> my first year as soon as I went there. I was like excited. I was like, yep. Yeah. Mom, I made it. I'm going to America. Like, this is it. Like, I was so gassed. Like, I remember, like, writing my national letter of intent. I remember, like, bursting out crying and what. And then I go to the airport. I leave, like, my family. I'm like, bye. Well, as soon as I sat down, I was like, rah. I'm about to go on this plane on my own and go to somewhere I've never been before. I was... From there, my nerves were, like, pretty much scrambled but that first year of my juco experience was like i i didn't start i was playing nervous like you could see that i could play but you also knew that i wasn't ready like i wasn't ready and that everyone's gonna go through that you're gonna go to if you choose to go to america like you go to america you're gonna get hit with that initial oh rah this isn't like ebl this isn't like national league this isn't like, oh, like you can stay in front of me. Like what? Like, oh, like you, really, you can like, there's a lot, like there's a lot you're going to have to fight through. And with me, I went into, cause I have, to, I think I put the pressure on myself to like, okay, like I'm the import, like I'm the European, like everyone's proud of me back home. Like I've been posted on hoops fix. Like this is it. Like, I'm supposed, I'm supposed, like this is it. Everyone, I'm going to the league. Like this is it. Like, I'm going to kill. Like that was that was my mindset, and I got there, and I was like, ah, everyone is just, if not like, better than me, yeah. and that was really like the generalization of everyone. Like I, in practices, like my coach would shout with me, and then I would leave practice, going back to my dorm, like I'm gonna get sent home, like he's not gonna want to, like, like I'm not gonna play, like do I come home at Christmas, like, man, the amount of times. I second guessed myself was unbelievable. Like I remember like just being on the phone to my grandma, I was like, grandma, like, I'm not sure if this is like meant for me. Like, like I, I know I'm good, but maybe I'm not good for like here. I, I probably did this once a month to her, bless her. But that first year was <sighs> mad. I remember just, I just always felt like the coach was shouting at me, like directly at me. Just, like, just you, nobody said, else. Like, this is about me. I was like, turnover, I was like, oh, it's the worst. It, trust me, my first year in JUCO was not the one. But the more I spoke to like my friends and like other people who have gone to America, they're like, yeah, man, like this is like, I was like, okay. So everyone kind of goes through that transition stage. Yeah. And then you just got to find, I was trying to be the guy. It's pretty much what it was. Like I left England like as a good defender and like, a really good three-point shooter and someone that's like really good at straight line driving those are the three things that i left england with and what made me get the scholarship i go to america i'm like i have to be like steph curry or i'm uh, gonna get sent home. that was my that was so anything i did that was outside of that box and it flopped i just crumbled and then i started to figure out i was like dre like this is not why you're here and i spoke to my coach like on a level and then I just realized that it's not about just going to America and just trying to be like a first round pick. It's like, yeah, yeah. This is, this is college ball. Like, you're in a team, start in your role. 
that was it. That was like, and as soon as I figured that out, which was probably towards the end of my first year, I started, I was like, okay, I know that I can be the best defender in this team. Cool. So I would find a way, like, in practice, I'd guard the best guard. I'm like, being annoying, I'm like, coach, let, let, me, let, let me guard him, let me guard him. And then he started giving me more tasks and I started proving myself and then my confidence grew. And then my shot, when you see a couple go in, you're like, okay, like my shot's back. And then I started being a really good three-point shooter. So then in Juco, I was known as 3 and D. Like, that was me. Like, mm-hmm. I can defend the best guy, probably the point guard. Don't leave me open kind of thing. And that was like my go-to coming out of Juco. And then halfway through my second year, I had a really good team around me. And then I like began to start because I was one of the best defenders and one of the best shooters. And then as that time went on, I started getting more comfortable. And then I came like adding like that middle game of like driving and being a good passer. And that's how my confidence grew. And then I just became an all-round player. And then the law of attraction, Shamanad came to me. So my first year, mad. I couldn't even describe to you. And no one, I actually haven't spoke about that to anyone about my first year. Because I just felt like I didn't want to look like I flopped, you know? Like I, I never mm. wanted to be that guy that was like, oh, like Dre, like he won the EABL championship. Like he plays for Great Britain. He goes to a Juco and nothing. I, I, I was like so paranoid about that. Especially like as a young, like you, I was just like, worrying what everyone would think about me like not even in america just like back home uh-huh. you know yeah. 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 so much hype around it and then you're like yeah like, i'm going to america not many people do this but it takes a whole i had to build a whole new andre Ariso to be ready for america that old andre in england was <laughs> was not cutting it yeah no nah, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't make it now nah. was not was not enough like i really had to build a whole new person so I remember like going to the court at like 1 a.m., dragging out the shooting gun. And I literally, I, you could ask my Juco coach, he could vouch for me. I probably got up easily like between 500 and 800 shots a day, like probably just threes as well. I was... Similar to myself, you know what I mean? Like, I be in the gym every day, man. I'm, I'm waiting for my I'm call from the G League, you know what I mean? About. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> But yeah, religiously, I just created a whole new me, like, and that was the key to me figuring out how to be successful in America was every new goal I had was going to create a different version of myself. Mm-hmm. And I wish I knew that earlier, for sure, because I would have worked a lot more smart, smarter here in England. But I think, yeah. My first year was very stressful. Uh, with the knowledge that you have now, if you were to redo three things coming into college, what would they be? Um, my first thing would be understanding the school I'm going to. Um, I think a lot of us as youngsters, if we get any sort of offer or scholarship, we would just jump at it because we just want to get to America. And yeah. that's completely normal. Like, I feel like that because I was exactly the same. Like, I could have got offered from the worst <laughs> academic school. Like, I would have been like, yep. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not it. Like, you see it a lot how guys and girls go to schools that just aren't what they thought it was, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, I think you need to know what you're going into like luckily for me my college career was good I went to good schools and stuff but a lot of people I know and you see it a lot that you can just go you go blindsided into a school or a program and it's not what you thought but Mm. it's not their fault it's your fault because you didn't look deeply into it like true true are they are they really doing the course or the degree that you want to do or are you just going to have to change and settle because you just want to go to that school. That's, that's a, that's a, big, a big one. That's a big, that's, that's a big one. Lot. I get it though, because I would, at the time, I would have done the same, but luckily my mum's pretty strict with academics, but if you go to a really low school that isn't very academically approved and then you get a degree from there, cool. 
but you come back here or you choose like is it worth anything so then are you stuck to having to do another degree that's a big one there and then the basketball side of it like what are you going into are you going into a school that sounds good but you get there and it's not what you thought it was it's not professional enough it's not you're not getting looked after the coach said all this on the phone but then as soon as you get there he hasn't spoken a word to you like there's so many different scenarios of people's experiences that you need to know what you're going into academically, environmentally, like what, where are you going? Like the weather, like, the weather plays a big part. A lot of people weather, don't, you know, yeah, I, they, was, I mean, I mean, obviously Hawaii, you don't really need to research the weather that much, but Colorado, yeah. <laughs> Colorado, cold though. Colorado. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah. Yeah. Altitude as well. Colorado's, you know, up there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely understanding your surroundings and um, it's just it's just more it's more than just hey I've got this opportunity to play basketball I'm gonna get the scholarship off I go so um, yeah it's perfect I, yeah can't 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 state it better um, being a European player in the USA um, did you have to face any stigma? Obviously, they think, you know, I guess the stereotype is you're from Europe, you're soft, you, you don't know anything about basketball. Uh, did yeah. you come across any of that? Oh, man. Yeah, I remember walking into my JUCO. I got off the plane and they were doing like an open scrimmage with the team to everyone to get to know each other. I walk in, probably six of the guys were baffled that I was black. <laughs> no way no way Bruh, I swear they were like they're like you're the British kid I was like yeah <laughs> and they were like they were so confused that there was black people in England like they were Do you know what? yeah I've had that when I was in Oklahoma they were like there's black people in England yeah yeah exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. it's just like it's just like yeah man like what are you on about? But like, that was that, yeah, they were confused that I was black. And then. That's hilarious. I said, it's it. Yeah. And then obviously, like, before even talking to them, you know that there's the barrier. Because obviously, my certain words are different to theirs. And especially going out there, not really understanding the American culture, especially in Juco. Like, you're talking to a guy from Mississippi that speaks in vibrations, edit. Like, I was just like, <laughs> how am I supposed to communicate with you like um uh, that's it. But yeah man like there's a lot as a european player i think even in practice my coach would say um if you know henry langton he played with me and he came to my yeah, junior yeah, college yeah, yeah, yeah. he came to my junior college we both had a situation in practice where we were on the same team and me and henry did something bad i think and then he was like you soft ass european players like this is how, like, you Europeans are. Like, you ain't got no heart. You ain't got... Obviously, trying to challenge us to, like, get the fight out of us. But, like, just that little bit was enough to set me off anyway. Henry didn't care so much. He was like, yeah, whatever. But I was like... <laughs> I, was like I was like, don't... This was, I, was, I was like, I'm carrying Europe on my back. I was like, don't disrespect me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, it's for real. It's just it's like, like, they, they yeah. do... Yeah, like, they do think that, though. That they do think... Because they don't, they watch European basketball and they don't see like people windmilling and dunking on people and catching bodies and breaking ankles. That they just assume that we're very like playing netball. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> <laughs> that's how they see it. But once uh, like, but that, now now the respect's there. The respect's there because there's more British kids and there's more like name being put out there. And we've obviously made our mark. But when I was when I was there, they were just so treating it like. Yeah, it was weird. It was a weird vibe. Now you've mentioned it. I was like, yeah, that was weird. Like, they do see Europe as better. They just see us as we like to pass and we're really good at shooting. That's you know, how that, fundamentals. That old, yeah, yeah, fundamentals. yeah. That old boy, that so, old boy in the park, basketball, just pass, screen, yeah. pass, screen. Yeah. Good layup. Yeah. Good shots. Yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. So, What's the best part of playing college ball? The atmosphere. Okay. Basketball is basketball. Like, but for me, I was fortunate enough to play like against like NBA players and stuff, especially in the Maui tournament. Like I played against 
Arizona, San Diego State, Kansas, UCLA, um, and Georgia. But that Kansas game especially mm. was mad. Like, college basketball in America, like, yes, okay, there's more money in it than we have for, like, Bucks and National League, but the investment that everyone has in the sport, like, there's a deeper meaning to it than just, like, great kids mm-hmm. playing basketball. And it's so, it's just so, like, passionate. Like, we would have a home game, like, at Juco as well, Juco or at Chaminade, I'd have a home game. Like, I was just so excited. I've never been excited for, like, a game because I know that people that I've met in the community are bringing their friends and family to come watch us play. And then... Mm-hmm. You have like the lights and then like there's food stands and people are queuing up to watch you play and like the jerseys are all set out in a locker room and like your coach gives a motivational speech and like you just want to look good and like you're like proper pumped up and like your friends like that two days before that game like your teammates are like all right like, we got like you don't get that here we I, I never had that in EABL or anything like we're just like yeah we've got a game this weekend like I'm excited but you just walk into the game and stuff like that. You get treated differently. Like, you really feel like you're an NBA player throughout your whole college career. Like, I really felt like royalty. Like, people were coming up, talking, want to take pictures, and then the crowd's just so involved and, like, understands the games. I know here we get people that just cover they just, like, don't understand yeah. what basketball is. It's just all different. I know money is a huge issue with it, but the investment that people have, because they know... Oh. Got you? Yeah. yeah. But the investment they know because a lot of the community just know that that one kid like isn't just a basketball player. He came from this. He came mm. from that. He went here. He damn like he went through like a lot of people know the stories of basketball players and especially like when they're playing for their hometown and stuff. It's special, honestly. It's special. And because we all want to move on, we all want to do great. Like there's a different energy with basketball especially college basketball because yeah it's it's beautiful man like, like i really wish and i hope one day like england gets like that in like just a little aspect of college yeah basketball. i, I but, would i would i would love it too um but i don't think unless it's professional sports um i think uh athletics a little bit um but yeah, I th- no, and even then, as professional, I think um, apart from your meets, you know, like your rugby meet or your yeah, um, yeah, yeah. swimming meets or stuff like that, and even then, it's still like a um, a contained small community. Whereas in the pros, like if you watch Wimbledon and stuff, you know, mm. there'll be people camping out at Wimbledon and on Henman Hill. And it's a, do you know what I mean? Like, that's, it's a beautiful thing, but it's only like some pro sports over here, or should I say in England. Um, but I feel like with the majority of the sport, it's such a pride. It's not, when you go to a sporting event here in America, it's not just the sport. It's, hey, I'm representing the Lobos. I'm representing... Uh, New Mexico, I'm, do you know what I mean? Everyone's got a bumper sticker. Everyone's got a, uh, you know what I mean? There's so much, I guess, school pride, so much state pride, so much region pride. Yeah. And I don't That's think... Word to say, pride, yeah. yeah. We don't have that over here. It's just like, all right, well, I'm going to go support Arsenal. And that's it. It's, do you know right, what I mean? It's, right, right, right. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You go, you watch the game. Um and as much as you say, like, even you saying that there's um, people that go to watch the game, like, know about the game. But I think what's big over here is you don't have to know the game. Because it's like, I, I'm representing the local, like, it doesn't, yeah, so, you know, yeah, I might true. be a basketball player, he might be a football player, he might be a, a baseball player, but it's like, hey, I don't know what's mm-hmm. going on, but I'm going to be a part of this. We're going to go support us. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's the, the, the big, big difference between um, the sports. Um, and talking about the, the followers and everything, how is it playing? How did you find playing in front of the fans? That's what I live for, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a... Yeah, man, that definitely gets me going. I think, like, I love the camera. I love 
<laughs> like I love it all, man. That that's like that's me, man. When I come out, see all these fans, like three thousand fans, like in Maui, Hawaii, like, and I'm looking over across on the other court, and I just see like all these Kansas players and like Devin Dotson, like Azubuki. I was like, yeah, like this, this is why I'm here. Like that was my moment where I had to take a second, just be like, yeah, like this right here. The biggest stadium I played in was when we played Arizona. We were their first home game. Mm-hmm. That they fully sold out that game. Oh, Mad, man. like it was like yo. I, I walked in. It was like fans, just like you couldn't even see fans because they were that oh, high. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, I don't want to be playing. Like, I was just. I had a moment. I was like, wow. Like, remember when I was playing my. Second year EABL, like <laughs> final in UEL, yeah, and then yeah, now yeah, I'm like yeah. in Arizona, like yeah, it was mad. But that's what I love it, man. Like that. But obviously, it's not everything, but that is a lot. It gives me a lot of good vibes, and it just makes me want to play better. And I do play better in front of people. I I definitely do play better in front of people. Home or away? Ah. Um, uh, do you know what? I probably play better away, to be fair. See, there's a lot of guys that said that. They like the 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 killing the crowd, do you know what I mean? Like someone yeah. says something and, and the answering back, you make a shot and you give them the stare down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mean That's face. What I think yeah. And there's no pressure when you're away. I think like when you're home, you're like around your school friends, you're around maybe your roommates if you live with your roommates, oh, you're around okay, them. like okay, you, know, okay. you know what I mean? Like when you're away, like you're like, all right, like cool, if I miss four shots, like who cares? Like Oh, the other the team, team care, man. They're gonna be like, oh number but six sucks. He sucks. You know what? That sound that sounded wrong, but it's a different vibe, trust me. Like I don't know. Cause you gotta go to school with the people. So like if you okay, okay. like if you got off one game. The next day, everyone's like, yo, like, you went off, blah, blah, blah. But if you scrub or if you get, like, dunked on, you're going to know about it the next day. But away game, no one actually knows, is it? Oh, that's so, hilarious. So, right. That's hilarious. So there's a little bit more of a stress reliever when you're away. No, that's so that's why probably why I play a bit better. But I don't know. Definitely away, though, than home. That's hilarious. You said, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, I missed a couple. So what, nothing to do with the fans giving you grief? Ah, oh, they yeah, that's just what it is though. I think I think I'm used to that though. I think I'm used to that. I think okay. I just yeah. The fans always give you grief, but that's just like one of them wins you gotta get a nice like shot and then you just look at them at it at the side <laughs> eye. <laughs> then they're like on your side, you know what I mean? Because they're like, oh he's sick, he's sick. That's all you need, isn't it? Just one <laughs> nice one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> um, that was awesome. All right, so some trivial bits now. Um, this should be fun. What's the weather like in both Colorado and Hawaii? I, I, we know the answers, but you know, we got uh, for those kids that are going to Colorado and the yeah, whole yeah, Hawaii, yeah, let's let them know what it's like. Okay, so Colorado, you're getting the extremes of all the seasons. Okay. So, summer, it's hot. Like, it's hot. It's, yeah, it depends where you go. Like, if you're more in the city, you've got the buildings and stuff to shade. But it's very hot in the summers all the way through. Um, but as soon as you hit winter, it's peak. You're getting snow <laughs> that's like... And you're, you know the wind that's cold that, like, hurts your face? Like, it's sharp. Mm-hmm. That's what you're dealing with if you go to Colorado, right? <laughs> so... You need maybe some good Tims. Don't flex Wellington boots. You might get bullied. So probably some Tims. <laughs> yeah. And then... <laughs> probably joggers is cool. Preferably like waterproof ones. And then a nice nice jacket and a nice warm jacket, like a North Face thing if you can purchase that. I didn't. I just got some... What did I get my jacket? I think I got like an ASOS jacket, like a big puffer one. That's okay. cool. Okay. Woolly hat, woolly hat, woolly hat, woolly hat. No matter what hair you got, cover your damn ears because it gets this brick. It gets oh, cold. That's hilarious. That's, that's, that's Colorado. And then it will switch to hot. 
But yeah, prepare prepare for winter and then if it's hot then you're chilling. Hawaii. Anyone that's fortunate enough to go Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Flip flops. Slides. Nice shorts. Vest. Uh, and is that all year round? Mate, all year round. Okay, okay. Um, are, are there any extremes in the weather in both places though? Like tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes? Oh yeah, huge. Uh, Hawaii, November time, hurricane season. Okay. Yeah, when I went there, we got um, put on like a little lockdown because there was a hurricane. Hurricane? Yeah, a hurricane that was coming towards our way. Because obviously Hawaii is made up of like nine different islands. So they're trying to track this big hurricane. Is like, is it going to hit your island? Is it not? But we had a hurricane in my first year where it was blowing trees down. It smashed in windows. Like if you were near the actual water, like it was very, very bad. Like we had to live in like one of the school buildings for like a couple of days. It was bad. So, but they do a really good, like they've been dealing with that their whole life. So they know how to go about it, obviously. But, I know there's a lot of parents that worry about their children, so don't worry. They will be safe if you go to one party, <laughs> but be mindful that there, it, it does happen there. So be prepared to obviously like take what measures are needed, but you should be fine. But Hawaii is hot all year round. Maybe like a two minute foresty tropical shower, which is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, apart from that, it's hot, man. Like don't wear too much lotion either because it's humid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was, okay. I, I was like right got to Hawaii I was like yeah go to the store cocoa butter cocoa butter cocoa butter vastly vastly I was like as you would yeah because if you go in the sea and there's salt water your knees get dry up innit so you, you, know <laughs> what, you know what's going on yeah, yeah. but as soon as you step outside humidity it's like and then if you have practice like do not little thin layer of cream in it if you're gonna if you're gonna be moisturising like that but sunscreen is a big one because you're always going to be out whether you walk into class or whether you're walking home. Like, it's hot. Like, you're going to catch the sun quick. You need to be on point with it. Hawaii is a very, you need to be built mentally different. Carry light stuff because if you're walking, it feels 10 times harder if you're walking. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a struggle. Bring a spare t shirt because if Everybody. you're a man that's sweat, it's peak. <laughs> Don't wear gray. Don't wear gray either. Don't wear gray. <laughs> Yo, it sounded emotional. He goes, like, carry an extra T-shirt. <laughs> extra T-shirt. Extra water bottle. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's- uh, what's the must-see destination of your town or state, let's say? Um, or, yeah, town. Um, so Colorado, must-see destination in Colorado and must-see destination, probably going to be the beach in Hawaii, but, yeah, just... Let us know where if 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 uh, I'm calling you. I'm saying like, yo, Dre, I'm in Colorado. Where have I got to hit up? You're in Colorado. Do you know what? Probably the hike. The ah, it's probably for both. Actually, they both have great hiking spots. Okay. Okay. Um, Colorado. If you get a chance to. Colorado Springs is really nice. They have really nice hiking spots. Just their mountains are beautiful, man. Like mm-hmm. it really is in Colorado. It's great scenery. Everyone's like fit. Everyone's an adventure outdoor person. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, there is one specific hike that I did that I don't know the name of. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but there's, there's loads of hikes. Definitely hike when you go to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Hawaii... The stairways to heaven is beautiful, which is like another hike. Um, the main way, the actual stairs is forbidden because it's like obviously so old that it's probably like dangerous in it. But there's a back way. So go the okay. back way if you go to stairway to heaven. <laughs> but there's a beach called North Shore in Hon- yeah, on Honolulu, on Oahu. That, that beach, North Shore, is probably the well, is Hawaii is the best beaches I've ever been to, but North Shore, man. Like I walked in the water, it's super clear. You got like turtles swimming around you and that. Like, hey, okay. Yeah, beautiful, man. See if you can go to sunset or sunrise as well. 
Beautiful. Nice. Best place to get food in Colorado and in Hawaii. Okay, start with Hawaii. There's a place called uh, Marukrombe Udon. It's like thick noodles, kind of Naruto okay. style ramen thing. Okay. okay. But that they have like tempura, like the fried shrimp and stuff that go with it. That I probably went there twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just think. And it's cheap. It's hella cheap as well. It's hella cheap, so it's good. So there for Hawaii, Colorado. There isn't a significant place for, like, that would be like, oh, you only can get this in Colorado. But my two favorite places that I went was Texas Roadhouse and Canes. Hey, okay. I'm a Canes fan, um, but Texas Roadhouse has come up a lot. Um, oh, mate, uh, that, yeah. cinnamon, that cinnamon butter and the roll, yeah, <sighs> it's different. Uh, it's jo- different. Jo- the Canes hey, is jo- obviously fire. Jordan was like, yeah, you know, if I'm feeling bougie, then, you know, I go to Texas Roadhouse. I was like, yo, <laughs> so you know, go fact, bougie, yeah. Yeah, He's right. <laughs> Jordan's right. Uh, but, yeah. Even Keynes is a little bit. Yeah. Keynes is, Keynes is, Keynes is fire, though. Yeah, it's, it is, like, fresh, hot. Like, I, yeah, I've never had an issue going Keynes. And then the Keynes sauce as well. It's just like, mm, yeah, game over. What's the best place to get kicks? Do you know what? I'm probably the worst person to ask for this because I my basketball shoe game is probably dead, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like my 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 shoe game for basketball is not like do you know, like I only wear I'm so I'm so like tight with money and basketball shoes so like fortunate enough like when you go college like you get the team shoe team shoes yeah so i'd either rock the team shoe but if i've saved that money i would get one shoe that would last me from august till like march madness and then i'll get a new shoe march madness like that's all i do Uh, so i got shoes now what did i rock throughout my career where do I go? Probably, I'd probably just go on to um, Nike. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I just go to Nike because I, I usually, and I've been rocking with the Giannis, Giannis's shoe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or the most comfortable shoe, man, for me. Like, that's who I rock with. So I've got a pair of them now. But from now until March Madness, like, that's me. Whether they bust up in the back or not, ask me to. Oh, like, you, just hate, ride, you just ride them out. I hate playing in like new, sh- like I don't like changing shoes. Okay. I don't. But especially because I'm like one of those guys that picks up full court and that. I like to feel where I am. It's weird. But if it's like a new shoe, I don't like it. Okay. So, And then March Madness, like obviously, like you Go have to have fresh. a game. You got to have a crack yeah. game. Otherwise, yeah. like. I get I get mocked because my white shoes look creepy. Like I can't have to. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite American holiday and why? Thanksgiving. Yep. See. <laughs> I knew I. I was like I knew everyone was gonna say that, but man, like you get two. It's like two Christmases, bro. Like the turkey. All that, like, are you mad? Like, they go in. Oh, that's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> um, no, what was the other one? I had spring break. I've had spring break, the favorite holiday. Um, and another common one is, I think two or three people said, um, not like they're all the same because of... Uh, you're in basketball season. All of them are in basketball season. So like, it doesn't make a difference. We still got practice. They hated the breaks because it yeah, just meant that. Real <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've never had a spring break because we've always had, we've been playing in spring mm-hmm. break. So I've never actually had a spring break. But, um, never had a spring break, but Thanksgiving, man. Foy. I love food too much, man. Hey, that sounds to be the the, the common the common uh, thing going on. Uh, last one for the trivial stuff. Yeah. Um, did you get homesick, and how did you deal with it? Best way to conquer your homesickness. 
Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I got homesick a lot. Luckily, like, my one of my good friends, Danny Evans, said something. I think he put it on Twitter or something. But he mentioned how he doesn't know how people way before us would go to America without FaceTime and stuff because, mm. boy, is that tough. And, like, that, when Danny said that, I was like, you know what? You're actually right. Um, I got homesick a lot. I'm definitely like a mummy's boy and like I got two like I got I'm a grew up a house of women like I got three sisters my mom my grandma like so you know how how girls roll like they're very mm. like you know but mm. I think I think I did get homesick a lot actually especially when it came to holidays um because I didn't go home for Christmas or anything like that so I think that hit me pretty hard to be away from everyone and kind of like just tagging along like I felt like an intruder with someone's like family and stuff and like it would just sit with you like at night and you're like wow oh, like I really miss my family and I don't get to go home till summer um I felt that a couple of times really especially when something bad happened or like I didn't have a good game like you would just mm. those flow of thoughts like oh like I miss my family best thing I did communication with them like don't just talk when they hit you up like I always try and talk to my mum every day. I always check it. Let me and my sisters have a group chat, like just talk, like constant communication will just keep you sane because there's going to be a time, there is like, everyone goes through it. Like you're going to be a time where you miss your family. Like I promise you, you're going to go through that. The first excitement of going to America or going to college without parents and stuff like, okay, you're going to be like, yeah, finally away from them, blah, blah, blah. And then it's going to hit you when you realize, yeah. or you're having a bad day so if you if, the, if, the, if it suits you to maybe get a picture of them in the, your room or something that might work um, but I, I just talk to them every day whether it's a message or a voice note or like just calling them every day I would call them I just constantly communicate like how did my day go how did their day go just talk to them really I think that's what you have to do don't just try and ghost it, you know, like, no point. Yeah. Talk to him every day. Um, awesome. Yeah. Final reflection stage, right? So, uh, what was your level of independence before you went to college? Uh, was it suitable uh, for college? And what three things uh, should you be able to do before going to college? I know it's kind of a, a long-winded one, but basically, um, you know, was you proficient in being independent um, before you went to college and what things should you be able to do when you go over? What do you mean? Like, so cooking, uh, cooking, uh, washing oh. clothes, like being a man about things, you know what I mean? Or being independent. Yeah, definitely. Um, that cooking one is so crucial. <laughs> um, luckily for me I actually like like cooking like I'm pretty good at cooking for myself but when you go to either junior college or a four year school and you're really trying to be a professional athlete remember these schools aren't just for you they're for people that aren't athletes so the food there isn't going to be like you're not going to get salmon and the best salad <laughs> like that. you're not going to get that you're going to have a grill there where the lovely chef will offer you pancakes and bacon and all these like greasy fried chicken and stuff. Like you're going to get offered that. Mm -hmm. And that is there on the table and you can probably eat as much as you want. Don't be silly and stupid and be like, yeah, like it's there. I should eat it. That's what I did. My everyone, everyone knows about it. Like the freshman 15, when you put on bare weight, like I everyone know, it's puts cool. on weight when they go to college. Yeah. The freshman mm. 15 or something like, you put on 15 pounds or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. like you do you do because you eat like you've never eaten before and obviously yeah. it took me my first year to understand that because um man pancakes i'd have pancakes i'd have hash browns that have been like deeply fried i'd have like the bacon the sausage like that is my breakfast like, i would yam hard because it was there <laughs> Yo, sidebar, real quick, real quick, real quick. Don't you think the, the hash browns over here are dead? 
we have the deadest hash browns known to man. Yeah, it's dead over. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Sorry, I got it. Uh, yeah, You're right, though. It's true. It's true. The hash browns are dead. Do you know what? McDonald's hash browns can hit sometimes if they're fresh. Okay. Okay. If you've never tried to edit, I remember I used to eat hash browns from McDonald's. But I have, like, yeah. yeah, they're, they're hit and miss too because, like, if they're stale and old and the oil, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, but yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah. Now you're good. cooking for yourself, man. Like, I think especially this past two years, my fitness, my body maintenance is everything has came down to my nutrition and i remember in charmwood getting talked about nutrition like three times a week and i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. i'll so, go back again because like you don't think but your nutrition is key to anything you do mm. like everything and i never knew that i never knew that but i have this thing called um what's it called life sum and like you log in everything you eat and it tells you like how many calories it is like how many fats and stuff you have left to eat in the day like and i log it in every day every day so i know exactly what i'm eating how have i gone over my calorie limit like how much water have i drank like am i under like am i losing weight am i gaining weight like i really really track this stuff now because the importance of it is crazy like, like trying to train full time be elite and have a good sleep schedule and then eating rubbish ain't the one you need and me cooking for myself allows me to know like I, I'm paying for it so I'm gonna probably buy something good and then I also know what I'm putting in my body and I get it as a youngster like yeah who cares but trust me I'm telling you firsthand I've been there in it like before I played basketball I was quite fat so I know what the fat kid appetite is like <laughs> but I'm telling you when you cook for yourself, it's a whole different ball game. And being able to do that is just good. You can meal prep. You can be like, okay, I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. And you'll see the difference in your whole self for sure. Um, another one, cooking. The ability to pack light is a big one. I struggle with that. And I'm a grown ass. Yeah. Hey, I struggle with it too. Like going to America, like I think I left with, like a huge rucksack, two suitcases and a duffel bag. Like, do I really need? And then when I went to Hawaii, I left with one suitcase and a backpack. Wow. So like, I, so like going to Colorado, I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had everything, and then how did you manage to, to? Oh, okay. I don't need that. I'm like, okay. I'm only going to school in basketball. Okay, if I want to look nice, I'll use these two pair of shoes. And then I don't need three pairs of black jeans and four blue. Like, I just need two and two. And it's just like, that's the kind of, like, you don't really need it all. And then I realized I wasn't wearing it all. And then it's just one of them ones where no one really cares if you're drippy every single day to go to English class, isn't it? Like, no one cares. <laughs> so, yeah, packing light, cooking. Packing, like cooking, and probably just write, like being able to track your week, I think is a big one. I think okay. time goes so quickly and you just go through the motions of it all. Like, yeah, okay, you wake up, you eat, you go practice, you go to school, you might go to the gym or something, and then you socialize with your friends, which is cool. Like, that's, but that is, that is technically your daily life for four years, right? And, you can either go through the motions of that. But what I figured out my first year is that, okay, I came for basketball. So four hours of my day is devoted to basketball. And let's say you're up for, what, 12 hours? Maybe you got 14 hours a day. Let's say you're up 14 hours a day. Four mm -hmm. hours. What are you doing for the other 10? Like, okay, you do two hours of real school, like outside of lessons, Okay. But then you socialize with you. Like, what else are you investing in yourself? Because you're going to be four years away from home. Like, you're either coming back better than you left or you're coming back maybe just a little bit better of a basketball player and older with a beard. Like, <laughs> it's just one of them yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Like, so then I realized, like, and the Steve Harvey things I've been watching, like, you need to invest in yourself in other ways. Like, priorities is the main one. So I just realized to 
write my weekly out. I was, and when I wrote it out, I was like, right, all I'm doing is I've got a lot of free time here. Like, so then I picked up reading and watching podcasts is like what I do. So like every time I wake up at six and if I'm riding to the gym or something, I don't listen to music. I'll listen to a podcast. I'll learn about mindsets or like anything you're interested in, like maybe like property or how to like maintain your body. Like what, like those little educational series you go through year to year basis helps so much. So that's a good one to do. I think it's to plan your week and try and fit something in there, maybe an hour or two a day that is outside of your usual routine. That's a good one. Okay, nice. Yeah, I like it. Uh, what was the biggest adjustment to the American culture? Um, and was there a big difference? Besides portion sizes of the food. <laughs> Rah. <laughs> You could you could vouch for me. Tell me it's not a madness. Yeah, you get like a you get like a cup. You know, you get a, a medium cup, and it's like this size almost. You know what I mean, it's like you know what I mean, you get a huge. It's like, oh, do you, go, do you want to go large? And you're like, uh, no, I'm cool. Thanks. It is mad. Like portions yeah portion sizes is definitely the biggest one like <laughs> don't think to like if you go to mcdonald's and ask for a large it's not the same it's not the same don't <laughs> ask for a large whatever you do small or medium you're straight i'm telling you <laughs> um, besides the portion sizes <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it's true though. Don't tell me it's not. It's, it's, it's true. Mad. It's true. But it's the way you came up with it, it was like, what? Well, besides the portions. <laughs> it's mad. That is actually probably the main one. The portion sizes threw me off. I was like, yeah, can I have a large? I mean, I think I went to a place called Sonic. Yeah, I was like, yeah, 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 I have, yeah. A, I have a large strawberry lemonade. My girl was like this through the little window. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I swear. <laughs> I was like, nah, you guys are having me on. Like, who ordered me a who ordered me a quadruple X, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was mad. That's hilarious. Two hands. Two yeah, hands on the mad. Tr- it's, yeah, that's it. You're just, yeah, mad. And now a lot that 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 drink set me that drink set me straight for about two weeks, bro, in my fridge. <laughs> It had to. It had to be like tilted on the side bit because it was so like it wouldn't even. Man. Uh, oh, you say just, just, just sip it, man. You said it took him two days to finish the drink, yeah. Yeah, man. There's no point. Properly there's hydrated. Not even a, there's not even a cup holder in the car big enough for it. Where's the logic? 